gosh, you are right on time. How are you? So good. How are you, Mama? I'm great. I'm so glad we were able to do this. I was like trying to get in perfect makeup for you and I messed up so much, but- Oh, you know, well, you're giving me patriotic realness. You are <laughs> perfect. Listen, you got the sparkle dazzle. Listen, whenever I mess up with makeup, you got the memo though. I just put a bunch of fucking glitter on it. I fucked up on my cheek today and I was like, glitter, glitter, glitter. <laughs> oh my gosh. See, my glitter is the base. So I already have the glitter, but even then if I mess up, I just add more. Didn't Crystal say something you. about that? Like just add glitter? I remember something like that. So I am the biggest glitter lover in the world, clearly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I'm so, so, so excited to talk to you. Um, I, of course, watched you on season 12 of Drag Race. And since then, you've done amazing things. You know, despite the lockdown, you've done a lot of stage it shows, virtual shows. But you're getting even more involved on a much larger scale with the Drag Out the Vote. So happy to have you uh, as co-chair. So I know you've been co-chair for a bit, but you started out as kind of just like, you know, a fan, so to speak, of the organization. So kind of walk us through that process. Like, how did you get to where you are now? Of course. So um, originally what happened was, is that um, right when Drag Race got announced this season, um, uh, 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 Drag Out the Vote was having their first show ever in January. And they called me um, probably uh, literally five days before they had the event. Um, and uh, they, one of their queens dropped out as a host. And so someone recommended me and I was like, yes, I will fly to Minneapolis. I will come to the rescue, honey, and I will do the show for you. So I hosted the show and it was so beautiful to see everyone within our community and all these RuPaul's Drag Race girls to just really come together for mm -hmm. this amazing cause. And you know, through doing the show, I already knew previously before doing it, um, or before doing uh, the drag out the boat, is that one in five LGBTQIA plus people in our country aren't registered to vote. And that was absolutely shocking to me. And then I found out from working with Drag Out the Vote that there was a hundred million people that weren't registered. And you know, I've always been such a huge activist. Um, uh, I, I do a lot of work with the Women's March and you know, a drag kind of started out as a giant protest and uh, for LGBTQ rights. So I felt like I needed to use my platform for good and to really just shed some light on these issues, especially since it's a voting year um, to make change. And it, you know, it even enhanced things even more during this pandemic. And I, and I felt like I need to reach out to people. And since I have this national, not even, it's international now, yeah, it is. international platform to really just Spread the word, the good word about voting. <laughs> yes. Well, first of all, I want to, everything you said, it's just so amazing to me that you had this journey and it kind of started on a whim. I actually didn't know that it was kind of random by chance, but I'm so happy that the cause spoke to you enough that you're like, you know what, I want to get as involved as I can. And going back to what you said, how you've always been a bit of an activist um, in some form or another. I actually was speaking to Eureka O'Hara a couple years ago. Um, it was on election day, not the uh, general ele election, the primary election uh, um, yeah. for local stuff. And she was saying, you know, drag queens, it might feel like an obligation, but I feel like we've always been equality marchers. So it kind of just comes natural to us. Like when you sign up to be a drag queen, you sign up to be a political activist. Would you agree with that? Or did you, um, was it through drag that you realized, wow, I, also can, you know, contribute in this part of society. Um, you know, I, I've always kind of just been like that. You know, when I did start drag, I was really afraid before I started drag. I, I was afraid to be myself. Yeah. And I was afraid of the person who I was. You know, I, I'm a little bit heavier of a person. And, you know, I would go to these gay clubs in New York City and I would kind of feel ashamed to be who I was because um, everyone like, uh, you know, a lot of gay men in Hell's Kitchen in New York City have like six packs and they look, they wear the best clothes and all this other stuff. And I was like, that's definitely not me. <laughs> and I was kind of ashamed until I started drag and I found my people, my tribe within the gay community. And also I felt like I needed to, I needed to stick up for that younger version of myself. And I needed, I needed to be, um, a spokesperson and an activist in in um, the women's march this year, there was a bunch of anti-protesters with like God hates fags and all these other types of signs, uh, which was crazy. And there was this little kid standing there that had a gay pride flag. He was probably in high school, 
and he had a tambourine and he was yelling at these people. And I went right up to him. I was with a bunch of people and I was like, we have to go with this kid and I have to go like, do my thing. And I sissied my walk in full drag against <laughs> anti-protesters and we started a giant crowd around it. But I felt like I needed to do that because, uh, you know, that was me when I was a kid. I, I would have been too afraid to do that as a kid. And I, I wanted to step up and show out for my younger self because I was so, I was ashamed of who I was. And not anymore, mama. Now, now, now I'm going to speak for everyone and I, I'm going to wave my flag and I'm going <laughs> to all the good that I need to do to make sure that our, our, our rights as LGBTQ plus people and just human beings in general are protected. Yes, and unfortunately, they're just, they're not protected now. I mean, there we still have some protections, obviously, but I think that everything is just a, um, I was going to cuss, but I'm not going to, a cluster, that word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, I got you. You got me, yeah. I, I, you're probably like, why is this 12-year-old cussing? I'm actually 24, so don't worry. I, I know all the <laughs> words. I just look really young, and putting on glitter does not help my case, so <laughs> don't worry. Um, but yeah, I think that, you know, it's quite sad that we've gotten to this, the point where it's, it has to be considered, like, a brave thing to speak out, if that makes sense. Like, on one hand, like, it's great to say, like, oh, you're so brave, and that kid was obviously very brave, but I want us to get to a point where that's just how it is. I don't know if that makes sense. Naturally. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you, to how it naturally just comes to us. I mean, you know, I think as as being LGBTQ, as, as being a, a gay individual myself, it was really, you know, it, we faced a lot of adversity growing up, and we're made fun of so much for being who we are, so I think we're all, I, I mean, I know a bunch of my friends and I, we were kind of just stuck in this mentality, and it took a long time for us to be like, no, and, and our family, like, I, I grew up very religious, I was born and raised Mormon, and my family kept on telling me it was what I was doing was wrong, until I went off into the world, and I was like, no, I'm actually fine, and I want everyone else to know that they're okay too to be who they are, and I'm not harming anyone by being who I am, I'm just trying to show love. Exactly, I, that is the best argument I've ever heard, and you know, I am, I call myself a progressive Christian, so I am Christian, but I also know that things change just like some things in the Constitution need to change. Um, that's right, so, girl, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think it's important that we look at all the nuances and really anything, and I think with politics, it is so important. And what I wanted to applaud you on also is, you know, a lot of times we'll see, we seem to live in a black and white um, mentality. So you're either far left, far right, there's no one between, but I think if we all could have a discussion, realize there is overlap, there's also centrist, there's people who, you know, might vote uh, one way, but they are registered in a different party. There's so many different ways of thinking. And I think, unfortunately, it's come to a time where you're one or the other, and if you're not the other, as in the one that someone else is, like, you automatically can't be friends. And I just, I hate that mentality and it's so sad. So I'm wondering, um, you know, you're obviously very outspoken. Do you have any comments on that? What can people do to bring us somewhat back together? You know, I think that people need to really realize that um, at, at first we are all human um, and, and you need to treat people with respect. I think. I mean, this, as, I mean, looking at everything that's going on in the world, I think people need to take a step back because I feel like people aren't respecting others. I feel like Black people aren't being respected, trans women of color are, aren't being respected, or trans, all of our, our trans siblings. I mean, it, 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 and if you're a different religion, I think people are forgetting to respect each other. And I think if we just come together from a loving place um, and to really just, to, just sit down, I understand that the, the politics can come in to it and money and you know I think that's what people get obsessed about it but mm -hmm. really especially with this pandemic it can really bring people back and I think people need to be more honestly more grateful and more more appreciative and and to look at look at the bigger picture I mean I, I've definitely taken a step back by myself and like and I'm so grateful it, you know this pandemic has really made me look inward a lot and, I, and I'm sure it's done that to a lot of people oh me too completely <laughs> Yeah, and I think people need to just start looking inward and, and, and to, you know, like, uh, find that, you know, good Christian in them, uh, essentially, to, to, 
to just realize like what the world is going through and how this negativity and 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 these these far rights and these far lefts we just need to come together as human beings and respect each other equally Mm -hmm. it goes back to stuff we learn in kindergarten if not preschool you know respect each other and obviously that idea becomes more um there's more aspects of it so to speak what does respect look like which we grasp um as we get older in different ways but yeah the divisive rhetoric it truly is divisive so thank you for clarifying that i think it's super important i reach an audience um gen z millennial and you know i'm even guilty of reading something at face value and being like no i can't uh be your friend how could you think this but then when i actually take the time to reread what someone is saying i'm like oh okay i see where you're coming from i still don't agree with you i see where you're coming from so i think we all need to do that self-reflection as you said so absolutely absolutely you know and the huge thing is is that um uh, gen z and millennials will make up uh about 37 percent this year of people who are eligible to vote, which which can make a huge, huge difference in the election. And it's why I'm so like gung ho about so many Gen Zs and millennials watch RuPaul's Drag Race. And yes. like, if you see, if you see a, a fierce girl um, voting and making voting cool, I hope that people will get registered to vote and also just, just make their voice heard. Because honestly, I think that us as Gen Z and millennials need to know that we, mama, we can change the world. And one day we gonna be in charge of this world. <laughs> exactly it goes back to and the saying always gets annoying because it's so cheesy of like we're the future but in this aspect we are like we are we can set ourselves up for a very progressive society um and uh going back to how uh you kind of just touched on it like drag is like super fierce medium to reach people i uh personally loved all the episodes of season 12 i must say the episode the like campaign challenge was so powerful. And I'm wondering if you think that in the future, that would be a good episode to have every year, not just voting year, to kind of keep people, keep voting on people's radar. Cause I think we forget like every four years, like you have this knowledge from four years to make that informed decision, you know? Yeah, you know, I think it's so important to have that challenge every single year. I mean, to just also make aware of, uh, I guess to make drag queens aware of, of, of what you, what's going on in the world. I mean, I know that a lot of people in that challenge, I didn't make it that far to that challenge, but a lot of people in that challenge weren't, didn't know about what was going on in the world and about politics. And I think um, I, I'm grateful now, the girls and I are very close and we have a little chat together on Instagram Aww. that we talk to each other every single day. So, and it's just so beautiful from my end being an activist from the very beginning to see all the work and the, the education that they've done to themselves mm-hmm. to really, really, really put forward and, and to put this election in the forefront and to make sure that people are getting registered to vote. I know that Gigi Good like wasn't really into politics and didn't really, um, wasn't really into to it but now on her Instagram every single day there's a brand new thing of her like sticking up and waving her flag and 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 putting her foot down on stuff and saying that this is what we should be doing right now and so I'm so so proud of them and you know and if it wasn't for that challenge and if it wasn't for an election year I don't think that um they they would they would have that right now so Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful and yes we we should have it or you know something similar to that yeah something that's like activist based um, because it's truly with the Stonewall uprising and the Sisters of Perpetual Hope in San Francisco during the AIDS crisis, these were the queens that were at the forefront in our community really fighting for change the entire time. So yeah, I, I hope that they keep that or they do something just like it every season. Yeah, something that gets the same message out. And I totally agree about Gigi Good. I was so proud because it's, first of all, it's hard to admit on national television yeah i'm not that involved i don't really keep up with it like i'm sure that in and of itself is hard to admit because people automatically label you as ignorant when honestly it might just be you're afraid to speak up because you might say something in a way that is not um you know perfectly said or perfectly um you know interpreted by others so that's the first step for sure and then obviously then doing the hard work and you know like i'm gonna put out what i say if for some reason it gets misinterpreted, I will clarify. I think that's so powerful. So props to you, Gigi, if you're watching this. <laughs> Yay. So powerful. <laughs> yes, me too. And, you know, I think that there is something about drag that does make it a very powerful form for political activism and whatnot. And drag out the vote, I mean, the name kind of says it. It's, you know, 
encouraging registration through the creative arts, specifically the art of drag, the art of um, comedy, lip syncing, all that. So that leads me into uh, Sunday's event. I'll have this posted either today or tomorrow. So anyone who watches it on time, you will uh, still be able to catch Sunday's event and it won't be in the past for you. So if you just want to talk a little bit about Divas for Democracy, uh, the lineup, because the lineup expands, I swear, every day. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's huge. Um, Divas for Democracy. So it's what they they did is that um, some really amazing producers got together and they got truly the sickest Broadway divas ever. These are I, I went to school for musical theater and these 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 ladies these divas <laughs> are the people that I I would I would honestly lip sync to as a little kid and like try to emulate and I absolutely live for them. We have Eden Espinosa, um, Stephanie J Block. Um, uh, Cheetah Rivera uh, and um, uh, Nikki M. James. Um, the, the list goes on. So many amazing people. And then we have the Drag Race superstars um, joining us. There's Juju B. There's Valentina. There's me. <laughs> There's um, Brooklyn Heights. You know, so many of us are coming together to to do this amazing amazing incredible event bianca del rio um, oh my gosh i like flipped out i'm so excited it's it's so cool it's so cool and i've been lucky enough um uh to see a little bit of the footage and like i swear it is the it is the coolest thing since since season 12 honestly oh, it, wow. it, it is really good i'm and it's probably honestly the best digital events that i've seen online um we really did it they did a wonderful job editing all these things everyone did it social distancing with their teams at their homes um and the recording and everything and it's it has such a wonderful message um and uh we got the buddha judges coming on um and and speaking um cheyenne jackson who is so handsome don't um, even it, start oh my gosh i know the eyes, so the eyes, i can't I love it. He has his shirt off in it. I saw it. It's so great. Um, so I want everyone to watch. And you know, it, it, I saw some of the um, the footage, and it really did. It really it got me powered up, and it empowered me, and and you know, to care about what's going on, and and to help voting in this country, um, and to make people of our generation to know what's going on. So I'm so proud to have been a part of it. Um, and uh, what it is is that the, the diva is singing and then the, the drag queen is lip syncing and then they come together somehow during the performance and it's so cool um, and it's honestly a dream come true and I hope that everyone tunes in. Um, if they're interested in watching it, they can go to www.divasfordemocracy.com and we're showing it on Sunday. It's a one-time only event. It's your only time to watch it. So you, you need to tune in, mama. Yes, you do. And it's only $5, a suggested donation, $5 or more. And what's cool is, uh, I believe it's streaming through Stage It, which normally has like audience caps, but I want to say it's as many people, right? Or is there no, a cap? It's unlimited. There's no audience cap this time. That's um, amazing. So, yeah, yeah, and so actually, there's going to be a lot of Drag Race queens who are uh, in the chat while Ooh. we're watching it live. So you'll be hanging out with them virtually chatting uh, chatting them up and it's going to be really cool oh i'm so excited that reminds me i was in one of silky's stage it shows and banji came on in the chat just started saying the most ridiculous thing really i bet i live for both of them they're so i know wild. yeah so there's obviously lots of incentives to watch but if uh you know seeing cheyenne jackson shirtless is not enough there's a lot of other incentives to, to be able to interact with you all. Um, and I just had a couple more questions. Is that okay? Do you have time? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. I'll talk forever. Oh, my gosh. I would love to, um, we'll have to do a follow-up interview in person when it's safe in Los Angeles. I was going to see you at Mickey's for the, um, the viewing party, but I think your yours got canceled, like, right before. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lockdown, yeah. So... Yeah, we'll go, yeah, definitely. We'll get together. Yeah, that'd be so fun. I love West Hollywood, so I go as much as I can when it's safe, which unfortunately it's not right now, but yeah, we'll right. definitely do that. <laughs> um, but for now, I just had a couple questions. I tend to ask um, every drag queen at DragCon. I wanted to make it a little nostalgic for you, so to speak. Um, what do you think is the biggest misconception about drag queens? Um, you oh, know... God. 
Sorry, I had to put um, I had to put these wires so I had a light so my dad had to go around, and he was about to trip. So <laughs> no, okay, and I was like, and it's his birthday, so I don't want him tripping, especially not on his birthday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, if you just want to start from uh, the like answering the question, we should be good. Oh, I can edit it. You got it. Um, so I think the biggest min misconception. Um, about drag is that uh, you know that we're a while, especially I guess about me. The biggest is, is that I'm I'm not a very nice person. Um, uh, <laughs> is uh, you know I, I feel like a lot of people from my season um, definitely judged me for uh, an instance that that happened with me and Aiden. And so everyone just I, they keep on having having this in their mind. And you know yeah, and the misconception is is that drag race is so stressful. It is not easy, Mama. And it is definitely a race. It is the biggest race ever. Um, and so we're put under so much pressure. And you know we're not sleeping. We literally have to. We we have twelve days on set. So I think a lot of that is um, it, it is a lot, and it definitely. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Sorry, someone was knocking at the door. My I'm at my sister's house, and there's like kids here, and they're like, "I want to see you, Auntie Britta." <laughs> um. So. Oh, it's the baby, sorry. Okay. Um, so cute. Oh my gosh. She's one year old, so she's probably, I can hear her clawing at the door. Um, but no, I think the biggest mi misconception is, is um, you know, in everything that you see on TV, that's not how we are uh, necessarily in real life. It's a TV show, and you know, uh, I, and I'm, 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 a, I'm a, good, a good time gal, and I love everyone so much, and I truly just want to spread positivity. Yes, and you definitely do. And I think people also forget that at the end of the day, this is a TV show. Not only is it a TV show, it's a reality show. Not only is it a reality show, it's a reality competition show. So things are produced. And I think that we forget that a lot. And unfortunately, we're given what people call the villain edit. So, but yeah. I want to say, I love New York City. So the fact that you said I'm from New York City so much, I lived for it. I know some people were like on you for that. I loved it because it reminded me of where I want to live one day. So thank you for that. I, I know, you know, and so many people, uh, I, I love I, when I did say that, it's because I feel like when you move to New York, it is, it is hard to live in that city. Yeah. Like, they, they ain't no cars. You got to take that subway. I'm dragging a suitcase and drag. Whenever, I feel like anyone that does live in New York, it's extra special hard. So you get a kind of a gold star. And I want to be like, and, and a lot of times I said it, I was like, it's okay, girl. You got this. Stop freaking out. You're from New York. You're from New York. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> well, and also, the level of drag or the standard, so to speak, is very high in New York City to begin with. So I'm sure like knowing, you know, I perform at all the clubs in New York City is also, it's a great uh, confidence booster for you when you're down. So I think that's yeah. also, I mean, I would say it if I was a drag queen or that's if I right. in LA. <laughs> I know LA also has pretty high standards, so to speak. <laughs> um, and I just have two, yeah, two final questions. The last one's pretty quick. I feel so bad. Your niece, is she still like trying to- No, 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 to yeah, they moved her. She's good now. <laughs> okay, she'll love seeing you. I'm sure that's so sweet. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that with drag out the vote, you're obviously trying to reach everyone, but you're you are specifically targeting, so to speak, LGBTQ people. Would you say that um, overall you also are trying to target um, the youth? I don't know the statistics, um, and honestly, I don't know if they exist. But do you know if uh, it's LGBTQ youth who aren't registered, who are like about to turn, you know? I mean, what, you know, is that it, is, that, that's our main focus. Our main focus is um, LGBTQ youth um, really between the ages of 18 and 35, honestly. Exactly. But, but, you know, through that, I, I honestly think it's, 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 it's definitely more than that. We're really reaching out to anyone that will listen. I mean, and drag is kind of, it's become so mainstream that there's so many allies that, that, that support it as well. I mean, and definitely my parents. I mean, all of us who are 
LGBTQ. Um, we come from straight parents who hopefully accept us and love us. Um, and so, I, and we have straight brothers and sisters, I'm sure. So we're really, we're really talking to everyone um, since drag has become so mainstream. Anyone that will honestly listen, because we're truly just here to make change and, and to do good. So um, if, 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 if you're going to see me twirl and I have a good message, I, I, I hope that people will listen. <laughs> yes. And my goal, I know we don't have the statistic yet, but my goal is that that one in five not registered is going to become, um, you know, zero out of five. So basically everyone's registered, but I know that's a huge goal. So we'll start small and get it to one in or zero in five or like only one in 100 or not registered or something like that. Um, we got to start small though. And already the organization has skyrocketed thanks to people like you and Dylan who are putting together these uh, virtual shows and just doing so much social media advocacy. So it's so powerful and don't ever forget that. And it definitely reaches more people than you think, you know, so. Um, and lastly, if you just want to, um, you did like the little call to action for Divas for Democracy. If you just want to reiterate that as well as your, your own personal like social media, just so everyone can sure. follow. And then, um, you know, I know you did, very unfortunately have to take a break from social media so if you just want to reiterate to the drag race fandom like the importance of positivity i don't know why it doesn't get through sometimes so and you're the best person to speak on that that was a lot i'm sorry if you need me to remind you of anything i just said just let me know <laughs> Sure. Okay, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I hope that everyone will join us on uh, for Divas of Democracy this Sunday, October 18th. Um, I believe it's at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, make sure to watch it. It's going to be incredible. It's the Divas of Broadway and the Divas of RuPaul's Drag Race coming together for a great fundraiser for Drag Out the Vote. It is only $5.00. Pay what you can. So I hope that everyone will watch it. It's truly, truly one of the best digital events this year. So make sure to tune into that. And um, you can go ahead and find me at the Brita Filter on all forms of social media. Um, and you know, make sure to during this time, it's really hard. I feel like everyone is kind of going through it in this pandemic. And to always remember to be kind to one another. Um, I, uh, I, a lot of people like to backfire that in my face. They're like, well, you weren't kind to Aiden. But uh, what a lot of people don't know is that um, immediately after we filmed that, I, I apologized to Aiden. It just never got shown. Um, so, uh, but you know, that's TV. And you know, Aiden and I are good and perfect, but you know, just make sure you should shed some love and positivity to people because we're all really going through it. Uh, I did have to leave social media for a little bit and I, had, I was going through a really hard time and I, I tried to hurt myself and I got the help that I needed. And, um, you know, because, you know, during this pandemic, I feel like a lot of people, um, I, I, I was alone, like most people. I didn't have my friends. I, the only thing I had was social media. But every time I turned on social media, there was someone saying really horrible things or telling me to hurt to kill myself, honestly. So I, I thought it would be good to take a break, uh, numerous breaks, I had to take numerous breaks, and I'm finally on a right path of uh, making sure that I am okay mentally and to check in with yourself and with your mental health. And if you need to take a break from something, take a break from something. But um, I know for me that if I'm not good on in the inside, then I can't be good on the outside to do the incredible work that we do at Drag Out the Boat. And it's so important to me to make a change. And so I'm doing much better and so that Britta can do much better to get the good word out, sis. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, we are so happy to have you back online and back uh, just in the public eye. Thank you for being so vulnerable though and sharing your, uh, your struggles because I know it's been hard with, you know, social media being, we're even more active than we normally are during the pandemic. So we are so happy to have you back. I am so excited to see you virtually, everyone. Don't freak out on Sunday. And I, uh, like I said, next time you're in LA and it's safe, we'll definitely have to do a follow-up interview. Oh, yes, we're going to do it. I will see you. Uh, you're going to be the first on my list when I get to LA, honey. Oh, my gosh. That's so flattering. Okay, you'll be my first, too, unless you take, like, five years to get back. Then I might have to make an exception. But otherwise, you'll be my first. <laughs> Yay, I can't wait. Awesome. Well, thank you again so much. And yeah, have a great rest of your day. Thank you. It was so nice to talk to you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.